there, Internet. My name is Jack Packard, and what is an Internet talk show if not pop culture persevering? I'm Darren Mooney, and something, 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 ship of theses. I'm Casey <laughs> Wosu, and the Internet has hijacked Vision and turned him into Vision. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please look it up. Hell <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, he was made in Wakanda, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this week on on A Marvelous Escape, uh, obviously no new episode of WandaVision, though I am counting that as a correct prediction for me that the hidden episode 10 was a behind-the-scenes episode as we get that, but we're not talking about that. This is all about Falcon Winter Soldier. Predictions, hopes, dreams, uh, maybe, maybe a, a shirtless calendar with all the cast. That's all we can hope for here, so hello and welcome. This is a marvelous escape. I just realized that some of the cast is female. That would be X-rated, uh, so we shouldn't do that. I was just, I was thinking about like the fireman calendars, you know. No, I, I was with you, but I immediately saw where that could be taken. Yes, yeah, that yeah. went that went in uh, adult uh, situations right away. Here we are. <laughs> Don't worry, I thought it was mostly armless myself. <sighs> ah. All right, so. Falcon Winter Soldier, starting next week, we get a brand new Marvel show. It looks to be a very simple buddy comedy action series. I'm very much looking forward to this. Uh, here's where I'm going to start, uh, which is I am... I am coming at this show from a different perspective. Uh, I, I read a bunch of X-Men comics. I kind of knew... The, uh, the Scarlet Witch history. I know very little about Captain America comics. I know even less about Falcon Winter Soldier in the comics world. And so I have decided to try to not pay attention to the meta this time. So my, my critical focus is only going to be on what the show delivers, not what I expect via casting. That is my laser focus this time. So I'm very, very excited. I, I do wonder, uh, since Darren, you're like the biggest comic reader of all of us, are there like stories that are potentially... <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yes, yes, going in completely blind. No expectations whatsoever. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry. So that, that is interesting, because, yeah, in, in my experience, like Jack, like, I don't know too much about the meta in terms of Falcon, mm -hmm. and especially Winter Soldier. Like, the first I'd ever heard of Winter Soldier was when he showed up in the movie. And to be fair, like, well, to be honest, I never looked him up after that. Like, I didn't care <laughs> enough about him. And that's, that's kind of how, that's that's kind of the thesis for like how I'm going into this show. Like mm. I I never really liked Falcon as a character, <laughs> in all honesty. Um, I sort of kind of don't like Anthony Mackie, and that's a whole different thing. But is it because uh, of I'm, Mom's spaghetti? Is that why? Because he got dissed <laughs> on so hard. Used to be called Clarence. No, it's <laughs> it's honestly because like I've never I've never seen Anthony Mackie in anything where his character was anything more than like either an antagonist or a sidekick or I mean I've seen him in Black Mirror and that was actually fine but um yeah outside of that like he's been kind of a a, a very C-list D-list actor like his claim to fame is being Captain America's sidekick and I think that's kind of embarrassing <laughs> like this show is probably the you know the best attempt for him to branch out but like going into it I have mm. no expectations like I'm not excited at all for like, that well and I do love, by the way, that you single out like the Black Mirror episode as like your favorite Anthony Mackie performance when precisely half of the internet <laughs> is really hoping that the Falcon and Winter Soldier turns into that Black Mirror episode. <laughs> 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 what I will say, though, actually, to, 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 to Mackie's credit, is that generally speaking, where I think he's performed really well as an actor is in the genre that the Falcon and the Winter Soldier seems to be pitching itself, which is mm. the buddy comedy. Like, you know, for example, there was the Outside the 
Maguire, which was a frankly terrible Netflix movie, <laughs> which seemed to play on like, what would happen if we gave Canon Studios a lot of money and complete freedom, but it wasn't Canon Studios? Because it was like part training day meets Terminator meets, you know, every 80s buddy action movie ever. And, you know, it was not a good movie. There's a moment mm. where Anthony Mackie reveals he's a cyborg and says, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to make your peace with it. And then the movie continues on as if nothing has happened. And the movie's like, yeah, fine. Okay, the audience is on board. But I think Mackie himself is quite good at that buddy bantery stuff. And I feel like I would probably feel less... I feel a lot more comfortable with a buddy comedy starring Anthony Mackie than I would with, say, something like WandaVision starring mm. Anthony Mackie, if that makes sense. I, I he, get like, that. He doesn't have to be as dramatic and deep and emotional, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I And, you know, I think it's this kind of... This kind of expectations is actually the perfect kind of meta narrative for a story like this. Because, you know, what I do know about the Falcon, specifically in stories like All New Avengers, is what I want to say, is where he got his, uh, you know, where he got the shield in the comics. Which is uh, a lot of what I can imagine the Falcon's character arc is going to be, is taking over the mantle of Captain America, when he has been nothing but a sidekick or a side character. And I think the the best Marvel movies are those that are able to weave that meta narrative into the actual narrative. The the first Avengers movie can all of these heroes work together weaved so well into can all of these people from separate movies actually make a movie together? They whew, it worked. Iron Man three, the best one, uh, you know, is like hey. Can we go back to regular movies after the Avengers? And the narrative of the movie was how does Iron Man deal with life after the attack on New York and the Avengers movies? Perfect. It's beautiful. And so if that is set up as the meta narrative, can the Falcon fill the shoes of Captain America and we turn that into his uh, character arc? It could, oh, it could work so perfect. Like a mama well, used me, to make. <laughs> <laughs> like mama used to make these Marvel TV shows. I think what, what's really interesting about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the idea that it was originally meant to go first. It was originally supposed to be the first of these mm. Disney Plus offerings, which is quite remarkable. Because obviously the original plan was for Phase 4 to be more closely integrated film and television shows. Mm. And I think that, you know, the, the restructuring to put WandaVision first was an interesting choice. I think we discussed when we discussed the first episode, you could tell that they were not comfortable having WandaVision go first because they put two episodes out. Because they were very much worried that if they just did one at a time, people might lose interest. You know, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to get into that again. But what I think that what's interesting about the Falcon Winter Soldier, and again, this kind of ties back to what you're saying there, it looks very much like it is an attempt to do a Marvel movie on television on a weekly basis. So One Division, and one of the things I loved about One Division was that it was about television, it was about sitcoms, it was a loving celebration of the form and the history of television as a medium. And so was I, you know, I would argue even now the perfect olive branch to the MCU's <laughs> coming to television. We're going to recognize television as a distinct form. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier looks a lot more like, well, it looks like a Captain America movie that's going to run about eight hours, which is grand because people like Captain America movies. Um, mm -hmm. You can't really ask for that much more. And it's kind of interesting when you look at it. And again, you, you kind of mentioned not having any comics background here and not wanting any kind of meta narrative or any background details or anything like that. One of the things that is, I would argue, interesting about the Captain America movies is more than the Thor or the Iron Man movies, they've typically been rooted in one particular iteration of the character. Now, mm. I know there are going to be fans in the YouTube comments, no, but Darren, you clearly don't appreciate the influence of Jack Kirby on this. And I guess, yes, yes, I do. But um, by and large... Back the away, in... fictional fan. Yeah, and, and Darren has just created straw fan, if you will. But, um, like, obviously, you know, there are lots of influences and sources. I mean, like, for example, this is going to star Wyatt Russell as US agent, the character from Mark Grunwald's kind of seminal kind of 80s run on the character, which is absolutely massive and hugely influential. But by and large, the biggest influence on the Captain America movies has been Ed Brubaker's uh, run on the, on basically on Captain America as a title. And it's interesting because 
he you pointed out quite correctly that like the Falcon taking over the mantle of Captain America was quite recently. You pointed out to all new Avengers, I think written by Al Ewing. Um, I think it also happened over the Captain America titles that were written by uh, Nick Spencer leading up to Secret Empire as well. Mm. But Brubaker was the guy who brought Bucky Barnes back from the dead. He wrote the storyline titled oh. The Winter Soldier. Um, Brubaker, massive influence. He wrote obviously Captain America during Civil War as well, which is obviously a huge influence on Captain America Civil War and so on and so forth. And one of the big kind of influences on on, or one of the big themes of kind of his, his arc was this idea of a character taking over the mantle of Steve Rogers after Steve Rogers has died. And I suspect going into the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you will continue to see that influence. Even though when Brubaker did it with all of his artists, including like Jackson Buse and stuff like that, he did it using Bucky as the guy inheriting the shield. I suspect you'll see a lot of those themes carry over into like how the Falcon works. It's notable, for example, that they are bringing back Baron Zemo, um, the character uh, played by Daniel Bruhl from uh, Civil War. Mm -hmm. And again, that is another cue taken directly from Brubaker's comics, where when Bucky takes over the title of Winter of Captain America, uh, the character Zemo shows up and he's like, no, 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 wait, you were a Soviet sleeper agent assassin who murdered dozens and dozens of people. You don't get to be Captain America. Like, I'm a supervillain. I kill lots of people. I tried to be a hero. It didn't work out for me. You don't get a free pass. So I kind of suspect that we may get a little bit of that playing throughout, where like you have the Falcon as the public face of Captain America, but obviously he's doing it with Bucky. And I wonder if you might see with the character of Baron Zemo, like part of me is wondering the a lot of tension, a lot of attention in the press, a lot of tension in the kind of like announcements in characters and casting have been around the Falcon as a character. They're mm -hmm. they're going to introduce his family, for example. It's going to focus mm -hmm. on his backstory and his history, which is good because the Falcon, as as Casey pointed out, not necessarily the most rounded and developed character in the yeah. MCU canon. <laughs> yeah, but I so, do. Wonder, someone point you... to me uh, in the movies that he was uh, first started in. Why they're friends? Like <laughs> they like why... talking. They like, like that's all it was. <laughs> that's like they, they had a quick conversation while Captain America, you know, upstaged him by being a superhero. <laughs> like he like he rubbed it in the face of this ordinary guy that he was mm -hmm. a superhero, and they somehow became friends after that. They're best friends now. My, my favorite detail about the winter about like the winter soldier is the bit where Falcon's like, Oh, you thought you were the only superhero. By the way, I have wings and can fly. And it's not even a big deal. It's like it's not even like his origin story. He's just like, No, I can do this now. It's okay. You don't have to focus on me. I'm not a big deal. This is your show. I know it. Um which I kind of like. But mm. I, I do I wonder if like you know, we know what the Falcon's gonna be doing in the show. The Winter Soldier, Bucky, his arc I suspect it's going to theme towards the idea of redemption. And I wonder if like one of the big twists either earlier or later on is going to be Zemo exposing Bucky Barnes as the Winter Soldier to the wider world and to the public and mm. trying to sully the name of Captain America. And if that's going to be the tension that we will probably see running through the show. That's my crazy ass out of nowhere prediction. Well, I mean, mm. isn't that exactly what happened in Civil War? Like he framed uh, Bucky for committing a terrorist attack or what whatnot. But like I, because I just I just watched like the Marvel Legends recap that they do for all the characters, mm -hmm. and they show that scene where like he's in the news as James Buchanan Barnes, the Winter Soldier. So like the world knows that the Winter Soldier yeah. is Bucky Barnes. Bucky Barnes is Captain America's best friend. He's in the big Captain America museum. So like I think the whole world kind of knows like oh this was Captain America's friend, but now he's the Winter <laughs> Soldier, and the Winter Soldier was a bad guy, or mm -hmm. at least used to be a bad guy or whatnot. So I don't. <laughs> what I would be more interested in, in terms of like an arc, would be if Bucky wants to be Captain America. Like he he views taking oh. over the mantle of Captain America as his redemption. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Steve was his best friend. Mm -hmm. uh, now that he's gone, he has the ability to basically do good in his name, and you know, let that legacy live on. And Anthony Mackie is kind of this outsider who kind of because he wasn't around or because his mind was under control like he kind of had it passed to him and he's resentful of it and then that's what Ooh. they're butting heads about like i think that would be a more interesting story and push and pull for those two so so you're seeing this as less of like a buddy cop comedy and more of like a romantic comedy with a love triangle is like who yes. loves Steve yes. more uh, and yes. i'm totally down with that yeah because that, that's kind of that's kind of the vibe that they had all throughout um either civil like civil war when they first were mm. met together mm -hmm. and then like i think whenever they were together in like uh infinity war and stuff before they got blipped like they were always kind of like 
oh, yeah. um, barking at each other. This is definitely they had to new be around bitch each other because bitch. of Steve. Absolutely. Like Steve trusts both of them individually, but like they were never <laughs> necessarily friends with each other. I mean, mm. the most heartbreaking scene in Civil War is the scene where both of them have to watch Steve make out with Sharon Carter. Like, that's <laughs> like being entirely honest, like that's the really heart wrenching. That's where the tension and drama lies. And like this is my question for you guys, actually. Because, you know, do we think because this is a buddy comedy, because like the trailers have leaned very hard into the idea of Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie sharing chemistry together, and because, as Jack pointed out, there are female cast members who we tend to forget exist in this, do mm-hmm. we think that we are going to introduce completely extraneous love interests purely to remind and reassure viewers that there is absolutely no way that the resolution of this love triangle is going to be everybody saying, oh, you know, we don't need Steve. We got each other. Yeah, I, I think we talked about this on on one of the podcasts, but I think they're gonna they're gonna pull the not gay lever really hard. Just like I swear, they're not gay. Look, they're interested in women. They just have you know dude stuff to do. They just like hanging out together. They're roommates. They're best friends. No, 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 no. She's not gay. <laughs> that, the fact that you're bringing that up made me think. Captain America. Before he went back in time to actually live a life, he was a virgin, right? Like, he was with no one up until he decided, I'm going to go back and meet up with Peggy Carter. <laughs> do they not imply, do they, do, do they not like imply he, like, that there was a night? I thought they implied that there's a night together in, in the first Avenger. It's been a while right. since I've seen it. I don't. No, I, ju- I just watched the okay. first Avenger. Like he okay, had no so time I mean, for that. <laughs> I don't believe they implied that, and they specifically say that he doesn't have time to date in, uh, in Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, yeah. Oh, f- well, and I like this is you know, Darren. This is something that you harp on a lot about how, in general, the Marvel Marvel movies are very horny but very sexless. <laughs> like they're. they're yeah. You know, they they balance that like, look at how gorgeous and buff everyone is. No one fucks, which <laughs> no, I no, suppose no, is very fair. Things to do. The world <laughs> yeah. is at stake. What's the Ken doll? It's a, it's the Ken doll effect. Like above the waist, all it's all party all the time. But if you told me below the waist that everybody was entirely smooth, based mm-hmm. on what we see on screen, I would probably believe that. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, absolutely. like even say, you know, Tony Stark is probably the only character who had an active sex sex life, and then mm. once like Marvel moved from like collab collaborating with Paramount to being a Disney property. It was like, oh, by the way, he settled down and married and has a kid. That's it. That's the kid. They found the kid under a cabbage patch as well, just in case you're wondering. And he has another kid who he loves even more. And that kid definitely didn't come from sex, just so we're clear. Wait, who's his other kid? Parker? Oh, Peter yeah, Parker. Peter Parker. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He has a little picture of Peter. Like, in his, like if you were his daughter, how? Like, I know he says, I love you 3000. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no, I just keep the Peter picture up when I'm doing dishes and kind of staring at it. <laughs> you know, he'd be graduating college right now. Probably top of his class. No pressure on you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> No, and like, yeah, to answer your question, 100%, and even more disturbingly, it's going to be Sharon Carter again. Like, it's going to be her, like, someone's going to fall in love with her, they're going to have that, like, we're fighting, but really we're flirting bullshit. (laughs) Um, So you think that'll be like the, the, the implied love triangle there, and that's a, that's another point of tension between Bucky and Sam, is that they're fighting over Sharon Carter? Uh, oh no! You can't turn her into the shield. Oh no, because she's also she's also his ex girlfriend. And yes, that's somehow like super. That's creepier. That's yes. Like, yeah, yeah. That's somehow even worse. Where it's like we're not. Yeah, because she's competing. related to his old flame. Yeah, um, and, and, like, and they and they hooked up in Civil War. Yeah, and like they they thought it would be less creepy if that wasn't her daughter. Like they made it her niece. <laughs> yeah. But like it's actually a little. It, it's pretty much still, exactly the same amount of super creepy. creepy. <laughs> okay, I here's a uh, theory number two is ominous lady in black uh, mask with red hand print on it. Um, maybe that is another love interest, which will play into more of the uh, redemption arc of the Winter Soldier, where maybe that's like an old love of his. Maybe that's someone he has hooked up with from time to time while on assassination missions, and he. <laughs> 
falls in love with her even though she's a bad guy but he's a bad guy but trying to be a good guy but maybe so he's like oh i can turn her and that'll be the tension while while uh anthony mackie and sharon carter i know i'm mixing up real world names and fictional <laughs> names that's how we are and so like it's okay they're all like the being people. really mean to anthony mackie <laughs> yes yeah, that's like casey's like it's i don't really care about sam wilson i just want i just don't want sam mackie to have the shield <laughs> Anthony Mackie, sorry. <laughs> I, want to, I want to start it's calling like, him Sam yeah. Mackie. From Sam Mackie. I do now. I just perfectly like Yeah. No, and so like it. It this this is a story that does not in any way need a love interest for any characters. That's why I am one hundred percent sure they will have a love interest just to pull that lever. Uh, which is very, very sad. Uh, do we do we know the length of episodes? Are these half hours or hours? Well, keep in mind that we all thought WandaVision was going to be about an hour as well, but the, mm. the, the summary that I have here on Wikipedia says it is 40 to 50 minutes, mm. which seems about right, because I'm looking at, like, the production team involved. So it's directed by Kerry Sogland, who is a primary television director. She's done some work, including, like, directing Fear the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, House of Cards, Handmaid's Tale, and The Punisher, and oh, I suggest okay. that probably hints at the kind of theme of show that we're going to get. It's going, it's not, like, WandaVision, and again, we talk about kind of, like, a mystery box, kind of, like, a prestige show mm -hmm. that was directed by Matt Shackman and he was primarily associated with say Game of Thrones for example mm -hmm. and that was kind of very much a statement of what we want this show to look like or evoke we want it to be big we want to push the boundaries of what the world is I suspect like going with Kerry Scogland it's like no 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 we want a competent action director who's mm -hmm. going to make something clean very efficient something that will look good but not necessarily something that we're expecting to kind of break the format I don't think we're going to see half hour commercials in here as well and it's being show run by Malcolm Malcolm's Spellman, um, who is uh, doesn't have a Wikipedia page, but is best known for his work on as a producer and writer um, on Empire. Uh, truth oh. be told, hip hop uncovered as well, um, and that is why I suspect that what we are probably going to see is we're probably going to see a greater emphasis on Falcon's character, um, if only because it seems like a lot of his work is very much kind of towards african-american kind of areas are kind of like shows or shows that are mm -hmm. typically around those dynamics and families so i suspect that we might see the show lean more towards kind of that okay. personal I, aspect i i had a question regarding that specific thing as well like in the comics when sam wilson's character takes over for captain america is there a pushback from anyone else about his race like oh there can't be a black captain america is that something that happens in the comics uh, it does a little bit. Um, and again, you have it with Spencer's run in particular, where you'll have totally not Fox News, but yes, absolutely Fox <laughs> News, uh, remarking on how it's not about the color of his skin. We just think that his character, you know, it isn't necessarily his character isn't, isn't yeah. strong enough for him to be. And it's very overt what they're doing. And it's like, again, you have a lot of this kind of non non-explicitly it's, it's not like a 1970s comic it's not like a green arrow and green lantern like traveling around solving racism in america like they did in the 1970s because those were very different times in american comic books here instead you have him dealing with things like police brutality for example and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff uh, and kind of like dealing with that issue obliquely less directly so i do wonder i do wonder if the show might address that actually because that's what i'm wondering is that a thorny issue for yeah i'm wondering if they Disney would yeah. steer completely away from from it because in pretty much all other Marvel mo movies, the uh, the only instance of like racial tension that comes up was in Black Panther. Like it was the crux of that story. Mm -hmm. And I like I just watched Captain America one and two like yesterday night, and it's completely devoid of anything that has to do with like racial tension. Like it's it's completely like everything is fair in the world as far as uh, like Captain America <laughs> Squad like in. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in the war is like made up of like Japanese people, like French people, mm -hmm. uh, black Americans. So like, I, I fear that they'll ignore it entirely <laughs> and just be like, oh, well, yes. Like, and like, the, like you're saying, like the issues people have with Sam Wilson will be some other caveat like that they give and then pretend that that's not born from just, oh, well, Captain America was this big white dude, and that's what we imagine a Captain America would look like. And now mm -hmm. that he's this big black dude, I'm a little uncomfortable with calling him Captain America. <laughs> well, and like, I, I would love for them to touch that, but I'm, yeah. I'm afraid that they wouldn't. No, I, I think that's why they're introducing. Yeah, well, that who, was who, my oh, go ahead, Darren. 
No, I was going to say, like, that is my kind of big issue with the adaptation of Ed Brubaker's Captain America run. Because Ed Brubaker's Captain America run is famously best known outside of people who read comic books for the Fox backlash it promoted when it fe- featured a 50s reincarnated version of Steve Rogers who hung around with a group that were totally not the Tea Party, but who held placards saying, teabag liberals before they teabag you. Um, and, you know, that sort of <laughs> stuff was deemed far too... Like, they, they actually um, read... They pulp the comics they rewrote them the version of them that i have in my library here doesn't contain that panel because fox news got so angry about it really? and i do wonder yeah it, it's a fascinating little snippet of kind of history and like for all that like brubaker's work is angry and political and overt one of the things that I, does bother me about the captain america movies is that they gesture very broadly and very gently towards big political issues like in say the winter soldier like drone warfare for example or the surveillance state in mm-hmm. civil war towards issues about like you know unilateral foreign intervention and things like that and everyone's like darren shut up it's a stupid comic book show and i'm like okay <laughs> fine but like i i feel like like again falcon the winter soldier is probably going to do something like that where you have like in 2021 you have a black man being captain america that feels you know and again you know I, I'm, I'm not an american i probably shouldn't be talking like this but it does feel important to me it does feel like it's a big deal and i worry it's an opportunity that you're maybe going is what to it is. Yeah. yeah yeah that you're maybe just going to pretend that it is is not or that it, it it's not anything worth remarking about or that it's not something that needs to be explored you know mm-hmm. i don't know anyway sorry no, no, I, I, I think that's very fair. Like, it, they have an opportunity to have a point of view here, to say something. My, my very cynical, uh, uh, my very cynical prediction is that they're going to just have a couple throwaway lines. Uh, you know, very similar to like uh, Sam Jackson's uh, "Want to see my lease" line in right. Winter Soldier, right? Where you're just like, okay, yeah, that's touching on it. Doesn't yeah. say anything. Just poking at it. And so I, I fear that that's what they're going to do. They're just going to poke at it. I think like bringing in what's what's the name of the the government's Captain America, U.S. agent played by Wyatt Russell. Um, I, sorry, John F. Walker. Well, no, U.S. agent. That was the name yeah. I was looking for. So like, I think that is a great opportunity of like U.S. agent versus Falcon. Falcon is like the hand chosen. Uh, successor to Captain America, but the government says, ah, we think people will like, you know, white man another Captain blonde, America Another better. blonde, indistinct hunk. Uh, exactly. A white man. And, like, yeah. and so, like, that is a perfect reason to bring U.S. agent into this to confront that kind of tension of saying, hey, guess what? We're a different world now. We get to be different but I, th- I feel like they're going to have a couple fun one-liners that people can gif on Twitter and never really delve into it. And, you yeah. know, and th- that's kind of Mar- that's... Disney and Marvel's MO, right? Yeah. yeah, like I feel like you mentioned that kind of like weird blonde male white Captain America thing. And part of me keeps thinking that like we go back to like Jessica Jones. Remember the first season of Jessica Jones, mm-hmm. a.k.a. the good season, Jessica Jones. But it had that kind of, sorry, that, that was me and I apologize for that. <laughs> Two's um, all right. Two's all right. It was fair. It was yeah, I like, fair. I like but like, But they had uh, like the character of Nuke and Nuke was very <laughs> explicitly like, this is a story about women working through their trauma. We're going to have this blonde Captain America archetype just wander in and make a huge mess over everything and felt very like pointed and very overt and kind of fun and playful. Mm-hmm. And I kind of worry that like the US agent character here will have less teeth than that, where we'll end up at the end learning he's not such a bad guy after all. Or he becomes like, he becomes the, you know, the three, you know, now it's the three amigos. And it's like, mm. yeah, cool. We're all team. We're all guys. I'm sorry I hit you that one time. Turned out that there was just this corrupt official who didn't work for the US government. He worked for another agency that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> Thank God we sorted it out. You and I were all best buds now. No problems whatsoever. Hashtag all not all men. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> not all men. Not all U.S. agents. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know they. Uh, I. That's my big cynical fear is that they are going to both sides this issue um, instead of have some meat to it. But uh, you know, I could be very wrong. There. You know, we get hopefully eight nice sized episodes. We have a fun cast. We have showrunners and directors and producers who uh, are used to dealing with these issues in their yeah. own shows. So maybe. Fingers crossed. This is both fingers crossed. So that just looks kind like of actually hoping that like 
<laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Just like you're kind of ready to pounce. What yeah. I will say is I kind of hope for this show, for The Marvelous Escape, what we did was, I remember when we first kind of developed this idea, we were like, how are we going to talk about, you know, an episode released every week? What are we going to do? And it turned into like Wanda was just like, well, let's dissect what it means and what means next week. I kind of wonder if like the buddy cup, perhaps even simpler format, might allow for kind of like a wider range of kind of discussions where you might talk about, you know, things like, say, the difference in going from film to television, the difference in structuring a story mm-hmm. over a season as opposed to two hours. So I do wonder if, you know, the differences in the show might perhaps reflect a difference in this show, perhaps, as well. Ooh, I bet it would. Meta. Meta. Oh, you're meta-ing the meta, which is great. (laughs) All right, and that'll get us right about to time to make sure uh, that this episode is able to be edited, unless there's any other points that you would like to make before we wrap up. I feel like we talked about as much about Sharon Carter as the show was going to focus on as well. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, one last burn. Nice, KC. Uh, Well, great. Uh, Get Carter, the original Get Carter. Um, Oh, wow. She'll, you know, she'll get more than than, uh, Peggy got. Peggy was done dirty by Disney. She got eight whole episodes of her own show. So she got three seasons, actually. So she got like 24 episodes of her own show, right? Oh, I yeah, just, I think Carter saw the show. First yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, she did pretty oh. well. Okay, then never mind. I mean, they did they did kill her off screen in Civil War because they used her cameo in Age of Ultron, which is one of my favorite like behind the scenes stage managing details things. We have three contracts with her, so what are we gonna do? Let's lob her in a flashback in Age of Ultron and kill her off screen in the next movie. <laughs> Sorry, that got very dark. <laughs> that did get very dark. But we will check back next week. Maybe our fears and cynicism will be dissuaded, or perhaps it will be even worse than we imagine. Only time. I'm looking and, forward to it. Uh, <laughs> by the way, like that, that did come up very cynical. I am really looking forward to just a straightforward <laughs> buddy cop action show. Yeah, it should definitely be more like much better action than mm. we've gotten in a while. And I, yeah. I am looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's end yeah. on positivity. No for Here's something for the best. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It does look like it'll be fun. The two actors look like they'll bounce well off one another. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I like buddy cop movies. This looks like a giant eight hour buddy cop movie. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Cut to eight Nothing. episodes Nothing. <laughs> like, say, save that bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks everyone for watching and or listening to this. Uh, once again, I've been Jack Packard. I'm Darren Mooney. And I'm Casey Wosu. And we'll see you next time on A Marvelous Escape. <laughs>